Transmission. There is nothing you can do. <laughs> this is Radio Takeover. Radio Takeover. With hosts Karen Wooden and Chuck Fresh. We ask that you remain calm and stay dialed in to AM 1510 WMEL, FM 94.7, 99.9, and 100.7. Chocolatey, chucky, fresh. Ah, ah, ah. Count Chocula. <laughs> Only on Radio Takeover. <laughs> We're on every Wednesday from 1 to 2. Thank you for joining us. Yes. And remember, we got all kinds of social media. Facebook, YouTube, Spreaker, iHeartRadio. Lord, I don't even remember them all. There's We're everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. Omnipresent. We are Brevard County's only award-winning talk show. I don't know if that's true, but I'm going with it. I think it sounds good, so hey, I'm going to go with it. You guys agree? Well, tell me if I'm not, right? Okay, Absolutely. Good. A lot to cover today. Yeah. You, you want me to start out on this? Yeah, let's start with the announcements. All right. A lot of really good things happening in Brevard County. The shelves of the Brevard Humane Society are bare. So we need some good people to help the Humane Society. We're talking about homeless pets here. Mm -hmm. There's not enough wet cat and dog food to feed the more than 200 animals at the shelter. So the Humane Society sent a truckload of supplies back uh, a, few, a while ago to South Florida to help we fellow rescue groups dealing with the devastation of the storms. But now our own shelter is probably about a week away from running out of food for our own cats oh, and dogs God. here. Oh, not good. So the Brevard Humane Society's Teresa Clifton is hoping they can get some more donations to feed the hungry animals being fostered right here in Brevard County. So they do some great things. I didn't know about this, but they have a Meals on Wheels pet program for homeless pets. Really? I didn't know that, so That's I don't know how that works. We should actually get Teresa on the show so. to explain that. I just imagine somebody driving around and finding you know, feral yeah. cats and feeding, which is really, really cool. Yeah, they got to eat, too. But anyway, you can help. To donate food or funds to help these poor souls out, please visit BrevardHumaneSociety.org or just swing by their offices right here in Cocoa at 1020 Cox Road. I'm sure they could take anything you can give them. Also, I wanted to mention Masquerade, Martinis, and Masterpieces, the legendary fundraiser right here in Brevard County by Salo Alcarenfil. 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 I got it. Woo! Where's the bell? Oh, sure. <laughs> jo Joanna Godwin and Grace Hahn. That's right, the bell's in the future. They will benefit the Candle Lighters of Brevard, a terrific organization that helps uh, families of children with cancer. Yeah. That fundraiser happens on Friday, November 3rd, 2017 at the Red Ginger Restaurant at the Melbourne Square Mall in Melbourne from 6 to midnight. It is a black tie red carpet affair featuring delicious food, fine art, dance performances, musical entertainment, and I, 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 there may be a, a fashion show. There is a fashion sure. show. There's a fashion there. show yes. there too. And Radio Takeover, of course, is the official media host that joined mm -hmm. Karen and I out there. And also award-winning journalist and Channel 13 news anchor, Mr. Greg Pallone, will yes. be this year's gala auctioneer. So more scoop of tickets. Tickets are going fast. There's not many left. Last time I talked to Joanna at www.salobrate.com. That's S-E-L-O-B-R-A-T-E.com. The links and everything are on Radio Takeover's website, too. That's radiotakeover.rocks. And also our Facebook page. And, wow, we do a lot of good for the community, mm -hmm. don't we, Karen? Mm -hmm. And right here on our award-winning radio program. It's amazing. So we're definitely on the good bus to heaven. I think so. Probably a short bus. Short <laughs> bus. <laughs> the annual Rosa Marina Boutique Fashion Show happens at Rockledge Gardens on Friday, December 15th. A lot going on in the next couple of weeks to benefit mm -hmm. uh, the Second Harvest Food Bank. And they actually feed people where the Brevard Humane Society feeds puppies and kittens. And uh, the um, Second Harvest Food Bank feeds us. Tickets are just 15 bucks a person, which is an amazing price. And I understand all those proceeds go to the Second Harvest Food Bank, too. That's great. Uh, tickets are available at rosamarinaboutique.com, again, on our Facebook page and website. Radio Takeover will be a sponsor on this event. We'll be there. Local celebrities Sheena Heitzman and Hollywood movie star Aurelia Rose will be right here on Radio Takeover coming up on December 6th to chat about that. So mark your calendars and listen to that show and get those tickets for the Rosa Marina Boutique Fashion Show and Fundraiser on uh, December 15th. That's a Friday night. Get those tickets now. I can't wait. That's going to yeah. be exciting. I'm right. looking forward to it. What's going on here today? Okay. Well, right? I'm feeling that. Um, it's hard to believe that Halloween or All, <laughs> all Hallows Eve is next week. And if you remember on our last show, we talked about some fun Halloween facts and trivia. But today, we're going to 
talk about a different aspect of the holiday. Oh. So with that in mind, let me ask you, Chuck, and, and our audience out there, do you believe in the supernatural? Have you ever had any unexplained experiences? I am extremely skeptical, Karen. Are you? However, I have seen and experienced many things in my short life. Have you seen the have light? made me wonder. I haven't walked towards the light yet. That's good. I probably would, though. I want to see what's in the light. I don't know if I'm coming back. But I have seen and felt and experienced a few things, especially recently. Recently. That are yeah. kind of pushing me over that skeptical edge now to become right. more of a believer. Awesome. Well, that is going to be the theme of today's show. Ah. Um, Radio Takeover, in conjunction with the WDN Podcast Network, has created um, kind of a paranormal channel. Mm. Uh, we've been working on filming our pilot, as you know, which has been really exciting. Turn our pages here. Um, we're getting in our final phases, so we thought it'd only be fitting to uh, talk about that this season, mm. because of the season, and we've got some of our crew here to talk about it with us, and I just want to mention really quick that this channel is also going to be including folklore and factual experiences as well. We're going to make an announcement right here on RTO and on our website, www.radiotakeover.rocks, when uh, we have a release date, mm -hmm. which coming should be coming soon, up hopefully. really soon. We're still working on a title for that. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But before I introduce you to our guests, we have some spirits in the studio with us right now. So Chuck, we do the honors and introduce one of RTO's favorite spirits. Darkness falls upon the land. The midnight hour is close at hand. Wait, where was <laughs> You're it? So good at oh, the spirits. You mean the spirits. lubrication. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Today's spirit is Wild Goose. It is a Sonoma County Cabernet Sauvignon from 2015. And uh, thank you, Karen, and thank you to our sponsors for bringing that in. And uh, where is this from? Where can you buy this? Actually, that was a gift given to us by the Rosa Marina Boutique, oh. Miss Sheena Heisman. And, Heisman and Aurelia, Aurelia Rose. Yes. Rose. It's um, very good. So, very, so very kind cat. of them. So thank you so much for uh, bringing us a gift. We never us. get, yeah, we never get gifts. We That's really cool. They also gave me a really gorgeous bracelet. The Wonder Woman bracelet. The Wonder Woman bracelet. Yeah, that's nice. Yes. So very. We're still waiting on mine. We'll get back. It's in the works. We'll get their men's line together. I don't have a Wonder Woman bracelet. <laughs> you might need one, one in your industry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you probably do. You need like a whole suit of armor. Right? Goodness. So let's introduce our human guest. In the spirit of Halloween and all things unexplained, joining us today is paranormal investigator Steve Kurtzke. Yes! Steve Kurtzke. Hello. The hero to me. Steve has been investigating the paranormal for a little over nine years now. He's investigated much of Titusville, so. Melbourne, Coco, Port St. John, and parts of northern Florida. His investigations have included residential, local businesses, hotels, and restaurants. Steve also hosts Dinner and a Ghost at Ashley's Restaurant right here in Coco. And you can go in there and sit down with Steve. He'll show you um, evidence that he's captured over the years and, of course, uh, evidence that he's captured right there at Ashley's. And Steve also brings in his equipment, and you can learn about all of that equipment. It's pretty cool. It's, mm -hmm. it's quite a bit of stuff. That happens every Monday night at Ashley's. Um, also, if you're interested in having your own paranormal experience, you can go into Ashley's and they're going to hook you up with Steve. And uh, Steve will take you on an investigation of Ashley's after hours. And that's cool. really cool. Very cool. Is. Also with us, we have someone else that's really super cool. We have Elizabeth Rockhill. Rockhill! Woo! Elizabeth is an attorney and a communication and conflict resolution specialist. Um, she's also a course director at one of the local universities. An advocate for alternative dispute resolution. As Chuck said, we don't know what that means. So. We have no idea yeah. what that means. <laughs> and a world-famous <laughs> author. <laughs> Previously, Elizabeth had worked for the city of Palm Bay as a deputy city attorney and was a law clerk for Brevard County. Mm. And Elizabeth is currently, from what I hear, the rumor, writing a book that may involve the paranormal. Cool. Sweet. We want to be in it. Yeah. Can of we course. Be in? wants to be in it. Of course so. you're going to be in it. Yes. I want to be the villain. Okay. Okay. I just want to be something spooky. You can, you are spooky. Can I do the audio? <laughs> you are spooky. <laughs> yeah, that would be that would awesome, be right? No, it's going to be from a woman's perspective. So both and a man. It's like oh, we're both. Oh, we do both. You and I can do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's spooky. That is spooky. That's spooky. Um, both Steve and Elizabeth are members of our crew. Steve, of course, is our official paranormal investigator. 
and Elizabeth is our director of research. And you know what? Actually, I was just thinking about this. This just hit me now. Since you handle conflict resolution, oh, that might come in handy on some of our investigations in case we have any angry spirits. Yeah. Yes, I can mediate with the ghosts. Yes, she can mediate. Wouldn't that be have great? Have you ever to done that? that? I don't think so, but <laughs> not yet. No. You know, I'm always ready to. We, we can't talk about that. We need a. That, that's our little secret. Well, you know why? That's because I get them all riled up and I say a lot right. of dumb things and wake all these spirits up. And, <laughs> and, and, and Elizabeth can talk them down. Right? I see a whole new... Uh, Interesting. Okay. Revenue stream. Write, write that down and we can't say anything further on that. <laughs> Darn it! We let it go on the air again. <laughs> I know, right? Oh, right. Um, also, um, Chuck and I were the producers. We're also the hosts of this. And not able to join us today are investigators, Miss Tina Grodens. And Sean Wooden, along with our super talented cameraman video editor, Clinton Landris of Negative Normal Productions. Genius. Genius. So thank you guys for taking off more time. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. a pleasure. I appreciate you all coming in today. Steve, let's start with you. I'm going to dig into some of your background. You were on Radio Takeover about a year ago. I believe you were the first guest on Radio Takeover from what Karen told me. It's before my time. It was an honor. Welcome Woo! back. It's been exact, yeah. almost exactly a year ago. This is kind of, it's, it's kind of, it's fitting for so, today. Yes. Yeah. Let's, let's start with you. Steve, what made you decide to get into the paranormal field? Did you have childhood experiences or something that made you want to find answers? Well, I've always been in, t in tune with energy, you know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, years ago I was a skeptic, didn't believe in the paranormal. And I wanted to see if there was something to the supernatural. Mm -hmm. So I invested in a few pieces of equipment and did my first investigation at Ashley's, ah, uh, it was from ten o'clock at night till three thirty in the morning. Were you alone? Yes. Oh, <laughs> dude, <Spooky. laughs> skeptical, brave, still, still skeptical. Yeah. And I was running a spirit box session inside the ladies' room, and uh, I asked. That sounds really dirty right now, but it, we'll get into does. that. What a spirit box yes, is in yes. the ladies' room as a whole. It makes sense. We'll and you know, it's a communication device, and I asked, "What room am I in right now?" And a woman came through, crystal clear, and said, in a bathroom. So did that freak you out? Did you oh. freak out? Because I would have ran yeah. out the door. <laughs> That's exactly what I did. I ran. <laughs> Communication over. Ran out of the ladies' room, but I was also hooked at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. You want to know more. Yeah. Yeah, ask further questions. Interesting. So was that your first interaction with a spirit or with, with energy? Your first Yes, that was experience? my first hardcore piece of you know oh. interaction. Mm. And... It terrified me, but it also intrigued me that much more. Hmm. So you decided, how long ago was that? Well, I've been doing it for about a little over nine years. Wow. So, you know, yeah. I got bit by the paranormal bug. I'm sure you did. So do you still get nervous after seeing all you've seen and being able to explain? Well, I guess you can't really explain it, but do you well, still get nervous in some of these investigations? Um, you know, your eyes and your, you know, your mind does play tricks on you. Mm -hmm. Some locations are creepier than others, but it's more of an adrenaline rush now mm -hmm. than, than scary. Do you still do them alone or you bring other people? Um, I try, I like to, you know, have people tag along with me every once in a while just to give someone a, a unique experience. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much solo. Wow. Well, I couldn't imagine doing that by myself, Karen. <laughs> I'm no. pretty brave, but dude. No. <laughs> in that no. bathroom with that box talking to you and you don't know there's nobody else right. in the whole place. That's right. kooky. No. Mm. I would pass on that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you tell us about some, share some of your experiences? Well, um, I've you know, captured a lot of uh, thermal footage, you know, thermal spirit, the thermal camera with spirits manifesting. Mm. Um, you know, on the thermal camera, it measure, you see things in temperature mm -hmm. and it has its, you know, a temperature gauge and wherever the crosshairs are, it's telling you what the temperature is. And you know, the, 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 the temperature set for the room is 74 degrees, mm -hmm. and it plummets down to 55 degrees, and you're not... Like instantaneously? Well, yeah, if you're not in front of an AC vent, or there's well, no... Well, even 20 yeah. degrees drop in front of AC is not possible. Yeah. And, you know, the, the environment changes, and something manifests where you can make out clothing. Dude. And then it disappears. I mean, that's <laughs> yeah, pretty that, impressive. Yeah. Is, is, How long does that last when the temperature drops? Um, quick or? It's usually, it could it could last maybe three or four seconds. Wow. Um, so it's usually quick. Yeah. And if something manifests, you might, if you're at Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, you might capture a soldier manifesting where you'll see the buttons on the uniform wow. or the rifle. Yeah. yeah. 
Three. Yeah. And you capture these on your thermal camera, you call it? Yeah. And you capture pictures or videos or what is it? Uh, it, it pictures and video. Yeah. Um, and you're seeing it as it's happening. Yikes. Yeah. So the temperature's dropping. You're not hearing anything. It's probably silent, although you have this spirit box, which... Yeah, there's no footsteps on, Dude, on the thermal no camera. No chains, no footsteps like yeah. they do in the movies. Thank yeah. God for no chains. No. Yeah. That's a, None that's of that. A, what's yeah. it? I was thinking of Scrooge. Bob. Bob Marley? No, that's the reggae guy. Is yeah, it well, uh, yeah anyway. I know what you're talking about. The yeah. spirit, you know, the night or whatever. All those crazy movies they go into that stuff. So it's not like that. Huh? It's more silent, more subtle. It's more silent and subtle. Mm. Of course, using full spectrum cameras, you know, you're watching on video, which it sees an infrared and ultraviolet lighting, which is a level of light that we don't see in. Yeah, mm. yeah. So you review the footage later and you see things that we wouldn't have seen. You know, I try to debunk, you know, the evidence to yeah. see if it's a natural ex explanation for what's happening. And if it's you can't debunk it, then you're left with something, something real, yeah, something, <laughs> yeah, something real. unexplainable. So, what yeah. do you say to non-believers like Chuck? Well, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I tell people that you know I I was once a skeptic also, and you know I was a skeptic out of lack of knowledge and fear. Yeah. You know, and I want I was curious enough to venture into the paranormal to see what it was about, and uh, I think. You know, sooner or later, some, we all will have, you know, an experience that we can't explain. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's just a matter of if it's just a matter of when. Yeah, yeah. Can you tell us about some of the places you've investigated? We're actually looking for more places here in Brevard County. Are you allowed to share that information? Um, I've done a lot of residential mm -hmm. uh, places uh, in Cocoa, Melbourne, um, a lot of uh, restaurants. Um, hardware stores, small businesses. Hmm. Um, I find that the places that have the most activity have been built or situated on or near uh, courts. Really? Really. Which courts has metaphysical properties, hmm. and courts holds energy. Oh, you mean oh, I thought you courts, crystals. courts, right? Crystals. Yeah, I thought he was talking about like law courts. Right. You know, if you well, hold a thermal, Elizabeth peaked up. She's what? What? <laughs> if you never <laughs> walk into a courtroom again. <laughs> So I hate quartz. quartz. So quartz, if you hold a thermal camera up to a cluster of quartz crystals, uh, the crystals will look like they're on, on fire where Whoa. the peaks are. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. I can have to, well, I don't end up in court, yeah. so if I ever do, I'm going to have to. That's my, <laughs> that's my, my <laughs> Jersey <laughs> accent. Yeah, that's quartz cool. sounds Jersey? like quartz. Is that where you're from? New Jersey, yeah. Me too. What exit? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Bergen County. Bergen? The north? No, yeah, North Jersey. North Jersey. Passaic, up that way? Uh, near Hackensack. Okay. I yeah. lived in Princeton for a little while. Where are you from in Jersey, Elizabeth? Westwood. Westwood? Where Westwood. is that? Westwood. I have no clue. Okay, cool. I know Westwood. I was there for a year. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Do you know where it is? You know Jersey, Jersey people. Yeah, you know. You're outnumbered here Jersey in Colorado, thing, eh? Chicago, this wherever Jersey you're from. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm from the planet Earth, Mom. Hey, yo, forget about it. Yo. <laughs> See, you got it. That was pretty good. It's that was really good. <laughs> Steve, what was your, uh, what would you call your scariest experience in all your investigations over these past nine years? Um, Something I'm, that really spooked you. The one thing that really spooked me, um, I did an investigation. It was from 10 o'clock at night till 6 in the morning That's at really an, cool. an old an apartment building in Titusville. Um, and there's two one bedrooms and two two bedrooms. Mm -hmm. And the building was built in the early 1900s. Hmm. And one of the two bedrooms upstairs, a tenant had committed suicide in one of the rooms. Ooh. I got permission from the landlord to spend the night there. Yikes. Lockdown. <laughs> right. This guy's got a set on him, doesn't yeah, he? Right? Lord. And he says, you know, you'll have running water, but you won't have any power. And at that time, when I was doing the investigation, it was, in the summer times, it was Ooh. 91 degrees all oh, night long. Oh, man. Mm. No. So, with my thermal <laughs> camera, you know, everything on the screen was one color mm -hmm. because there was no hot spots or cold spots. And I entered, entered one of the bedrooms, and it dropped down to 70.3 degrees from Ooh, 91 degrees. Wow. And I caught a partial manifestation. Wow. Yeah. Did you stay after that happened? Yeah. Yeah? You're like, cool, bring it on. Let me see some more, man. What do you got? Well, that creeped me out because other than a little headlamp, you know, you, you didn't have the, the no power, turn no lights. Nothing. And you stayed. I couldn't get nobody to share with me. Wow. I told them I had food, you know, drinks, you know. So right after that happened, right after that temperature drop and that manifestation, what'd you do? 
Well, it, it knocked me down to one knee because wow. what I felt like in that room, it was kind of like sticking a 9-volt battery on your tongue and being in a walk-in freezer at the same time. Wow. wow. Yeah. And you say the, typically the, the, the temperature drops only last a couple of seconds. Did it go back up to 90 after a, yeah. shortly, really shortly? And Yeah, because all night long I'm, I was wiping my forehead, drinking water, Gatorade, so I didn't become one of the spirits that I hunt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? right? Good point, I like that. Man. A little yeah. humor there. Yeah. 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 I was going to say, if you had wine, Chuck and I would have showed up, but I'm know, thinking right? more Chuck can show up, especially after you said the battery thing yeah, on your tongue degrees, and yeah, the heat. No, I'm, I'm know, past. Thank you very much. So this did this happen early in that night? When you I'd were say visiting? within the first two to three hours. Anything after that that night? Well, I was using a laser grid, laser grid scope, and it puts up hundreds of little green stars, mm -hmm. and it's used for shadow detection. And, you know, I'm sitting in the middle of the living room, and asking questions in the and, dark yeah with this little green laser thing popping around okay yeah you're and asking questions you're asking questions and throughout you know the the questions you can see the stars excuse me you can see They're the stars moving, moving around yeah. dude yeah. and there's nothing else in there no just me this is like a hive not a, a little rat running around the floor or something this kind of no. mid-range couple crazy. feet in the you're air the head of a person dude wow. and you're still staying there well yeah my mind's racing you could have left bit. right yeah. You weren't locked in, locked in. There's no padlock on the outside of the door. I locked in, but I gave the landlord a nice deposit, so I you know, wanted to stick it out. Dude. Wow. You're brave. And you stay awake all night? You fall asleep at all? or? No. I didn't fall asleep. I, I had soda. I had Gatorade. I, you know. And you're by yourself? Yeah, no one would chill with me. Dude. Wow. I had food. I'm like, man, just chill. He's in this strange apartment somewhere in, what, Titusville? And yeah. He's yeah. seeing stuff within a couple of minutes. Temperature drops. And he sticks it out. And he sticks you it are out. a man. Right? Good Lord. You should have a goatee. <laughs> I actually had a goatee at one time. Yeah. You look mean. Right? That's why and I some tattoos? It. No tattoos. No, oh, we're going to get you some tattoos. We can, we can get some temporary ones, put them on for the next yeah, one. Yeah, right, right. We'll do some henna. So, we have just, what, just about 30 seconds left? So 15 maybe... seconds. Okay, 15 seconds. Let's take a quick break and come yeah. back with us. We're still going to talk to Elizabeth Rockhill. Right. About some of her experiences in her research. Steve's going to stick around with us if you will. We stick around? Absolutely. This is Radio Takeover with Chuck Fresh and Karen Wooden talking about spooky stuff. Stick around. We'll be back right after these messages. In a world, the little black book, the truth about women. It's already been called the best dating book ever. The first and only book to tell the truth about women, dating, first names, and sex. This is the book banned in over 40 countries. Some powerful and successful men, and most women, do not want men to know these secrets. This is it. For the first time ever, it is the holy grail of women. Their secrets, and how to be successful in life and relationships. Sections of the Little Black Book classify personality traits based on the type of car a woman drives, her hairstyle, her profession, and even what type of eyeglasses she chose. Author Miso and Gray cites these are seemingly insignificant traits that can give you a tremendous insight into a woman's personality. Women are much more cerebral than men, so they calculate their choices more carefully, and those choices leave breadcrumbs. What's perhaps the most interesting and striking part of this book is the entire chapter dedicated to a woman's first name and what her name says about her. For example, Gray states the name Kim tells us that a woman may be bubbly, laid back, and virtually carefree, and rather loose. A woman named Andrea with dark hair is downright mean, but an Andrea with light hair is much more pleasant. A woman named Christine is dizzy and stuck up, and generally two beers short of a six-pack. Conversely, Michelle is exceptionally generous. If you need a hug, time, food, shelter, money, sex, or whatever, Michelle rarely fails. And if you're lucky enough to find a Lois, you'd better keep her forever. Gray has interpreted more than 100 popular male and female names in his quantitative analysis and disclaims. These descriptions in no way apply to the entire population, but the stereotypes are uncannily accurate. But that's not all Gray has uncovered in the Little Black Book. Learn why feminists are a lost cause. Learn why white women date black men. 
Learn why a U.S. veteran traveled to Asia for a mail-order bride. Find out exactly what you want in a relationship and learn exactly what you can do to become a Casanova and achieve success in the dating world. Little Black Book, The Secrets of Women by Miso and Gray. Now available for a limited time on Amazon, Kindle, and Audible. And welcome back, everybody, to Radio Takeover. Karen Wooden, along with Chuck Fresh, Elizabeth Rockhill. I almost, I almost said something else. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we're making up names and for we're people. We're making up names, so right? Know. And Steve Kurtzke. Yes. And we are talking all things paranormal. Paranoid. Paranoid. That's where I am you. right now, Karen. You're getting there, right? I'm about to have a sip of holy water. <laughs> <laughs> Oof, Lord. Uh, yeah. So um, let's talk this half. Um, we, we need to get to Elizabeth. Mm-hmm. She's got some great um, stories. She's got some great stories here. That's right. Let's talk about why we're doing this. Yes. Why are we doing this, Karen? Well, it first started off as it was going to be a prank because you're a jokester. Yeah. So I was going to grab some people and play a joke on you. And I was going to take you to a non haunted location and tell you it was haunted. And then we were going to put special effects in and make <laughs> all sorts of things happen. Bad. Bad things. <laughs> and, no, we're just going to make all sorts of things happen because. <laughs> Some of us thought it would be really hilarious mm. to see your reactions right to on. that. I love and then, that stuff. Uh, you know, things that just didn't transpire because the friends that were in on this, Robert Scott, Ryan Harper, mm-hmm. moved to Georgia. Um, and then from there, it just, why not actually really do it? And that's what happened. And that's what happened. So Listen, if I can mention something yes. before we get any further in this. This channel, this paranormal channel, we're going to shoot a bunch of videos. Probably going to do 13. We're going to do five yeah. to start. And it's going to get a lot of attention on Facebook, on YouTube, all over the internet. I, I see it going viral. Yes. And producing these shows is surprisingly expensive. So we are in need of some sponsors. But let me tell you why. What you'll get is charter bottom line prices, just enough to cover our costs. We're not making any money off of this thing. We're doing it for completely free out of love. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. We've got to pay some of the people who help us out. But we do. Once you're in this video... You will be there for eternity because once you put a video on YouTube and Facebook, just the way it works, you can't pull it down or you lose all your views, likes, and comments. That's right. mm. You can't change the video. So if you're a sponsor in this video on Facebook or YouTube, you will be there forever. You will outlive us for eternity. all eternity. The longer than Ghost will be. It's, it's actually a heck of a deal. So if you're a car dealership, a bar, a restaurant, nonprofit, small mm-hmm. business, anybody who needs a little bump in their business, we can almost guarantee. This is going to generate some serious views. So call Karen Wooden, ASAP. Leave her a message at 321-373-7400, right? Or email info at brevardradio.com right now before we hit the edit suite. And it's going to happen soon, so you need to do this now. Once it's produced, you've missed your opportunity. That's 373-7400, area code 321, or email info at brevardradio.com right now. And one of, one of the things that, um, the reason that, uh, well, we obviously we chose Ashley's. We've been talking about that today. Mm-hmm. And I got introduced to Ashley's because I met Steve a year ago, just a little over a year ago. Yeah. Um, so we thought Ashley's would be the perfect place because it has a lot of interesting history. And boy, was it. And boy, was it. But before <laughs> we ask um, Elizabeth, she is our researcher, what made you decide to join our crew? Because that's nuts. Because you guys are that awesome. Aww. 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 So you wouldn't do this with just anyone? I probably would. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I had to ask that question. We're a little more awesome, <laughs> though. Go there. <laughs> okay. Um, have you ever had any paranormal experiences until now? Yeah. <laughs> Shh. Shh. Those secrets. This one was the best one by far, okay. but I'm really jumpy, as you guys now very well know. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but um, I, I'm... Um, I've always been a believer in paranormal. So there's tons of th- times I remember going to the beach. Um, I went to Puerto Rico several times, and I remember looking for a Cuba Libra, but actually was a Chupacabra. Um, there's a difference? There's a, yeah. Cuba, a Cuba Libra, Libra, Libra is a Isn't that a rum and coke? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I thought it was a restaurant in Philadelphia. Yeah. We need that trying, pal, Chuck. Yeah. I was trying to convince my friends to run down. I was like, come with me. Let's look for a Cuba Libra. I mean, Chupacabra. <laughs> we should hang out with her. We need to. It would be we great. We don't hang out enough. But, no, there's... Um, you know, growing up in Brevard, Brevard's a very strange place, and um, yeah, I think there's a reason the Space Coast is here, and all. So I, I think there's I've seen lots of weird things. There's nothing that sticks out, mm-hmm. but it's just 
I mean, why do people always say, if you look at the map of the United States and the, how they describe Florida, it's just that weird state. Mm -hmm. And um, I think there's even stranger things happen in Brevard County. Yeah, there is. Yeah. We can't reveal too much on no, the other day. You'll no. see this soon, but my goodness. <laughs> you mentioned you're working on a book on the paranormal. What can you tell us about that, Elizabeth Rockhill at Amazon.com? <laughs> it's not out yet. It's oh. actually I'm um, I'm almost done editing it. Then I got to send it off to my second editor. Ah. The book is um, it takes place in Brevard County, and each city has a story. And originally, I had the the county and the cities were going to be named something different. So instead of Melbourne, it was going to be Auckland. And I think it was you who were like, "Why just name yeah, it yeah, what they are?" Going, so yeah. so um, and it's each one is it's normal. It's not young adult by any means. It's definitely got adult content in there. Sweet. Um, movie that means sex <laughs> yeah <laughs> sex <And> violence. Drugs, <laughs> alcohol you know all the good stuff that makes it fun to read micro penis <laughs> just wanted, always wanted to say throw that. that out there yeah i never said that on the radio before did i just get beeped okay go ahead nobody's paying attention i'm trying to be good, good today <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's and it's so it just takes there's the first one actually um the character anna she's uh, in her last semester of high school and she's um went through a lot. Her brother died when she was very young and her best friend died. And so she wow. was kind of self-destructive Yeah, tough. and she's a painter and, you know, likes to hang out with older people, partake in different, um, adult situations, well, adult situations. <laughs> and, uh, right. She meets, she's in a debate class and, uh, she meets a new student who comes down from New York and his name is chance. And he's very yuppie model type, you know, nothing that she's not used to. And she's barely got her hair done. So they get into a fight over talking about a book and so they're, the teacher's like, well, you know what? I'm going to have you guys volunteer together because you have to learn how to get along with different people. And as they volunteer together at a community center, they start to realize, like, different weird things happening. Um, and so you find out that he can, he's got certain abilities to influence people, and she's more of an empath. And they actually take a trip to Casadega, and then they start to, from there, like, more and more things start happening. And um, But you find out later on that there's ghosts that kind of been following Anna around. Oh, boy. Chip so. size are huge. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. What a story. Right. And it all happens right here in Brevard County. <laughs> yeah, the first one takes place in Melbourne and in the Atlantic. Ooh, and then yeah. the next one is the one that takes place in Palm Bay, and it's Chili. The characters are Chili. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I like the names. Yeah, Penelope. Yeah, so. And um, and then the, the gentleman's name was Rex, but I changed it because I just changed it. <laughs> <laughs> you can do that when you're like that. <laughs> Your power. It is what it His is. His name's Rex. That's the coolest thing about writing yeah. is that, you know, it, it's God. like if you yeah. have a bad yeah. day or if anyone makes you mad, it's like, that's fine. I'm going to make you a character in my book. Yeah, yeah. channel it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Taylor Swift does it all the time. Know, well, right. the, the next one is the one about <clears throat> Palm Bay, and it <clears throat> allegedly has that all the politicians are zombies. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Nice. Right? Yeah, I like it. That's so, not far from the truth. Not, right? right. <laughs> so why don't you, um, getting back to the channel that we're doing, why don't you give us a little bit, if you could, some of the brief history, what you found out about Ashley's. Yeah, there's a lot of amazing information, and I know we're going to introduce it more later. So mm -hmm. to summarize it, yeah, Ashley's was built in the 1920s. It's in Rockledge, for anyone who doesn't know that. Uh, there's four basic theories about uh, what has made it haunted. Mm -hmm. The first is that it is a Native American burial ground. Ooh, spooky. Mm -hmm. uh, that there was a boy killed on the railroad tracks behind it. Uh, the third one is that there was a girl killed in an accident out front. And then the fourth one has the most uh, history to support it, factual basis, that a woman named Miss Ethel Allen was murdered. And this was, and she was murdered in 1934. The body was recovered near O'Galley, which was spooky wow. to me because yes. I live just a little bit south of O'Galley and uh, over on the beach side. And um, her body was horribly mutilated. Uh, mm -hmm. It was uh, partially burned. And then she had was found with the initials BK tattooed on her leg. Now, did she have a, a rose on her, too? I've heard that, yeah. I've heard that some places, yes, and some places, okay. no. So mm -hmm. that, like, can't be confirmed. But the initials okay. BK were definitely, everyone I've seen has had that. Every source I've found has confirmed the BK. The rows I've mm -hmm. seen in a lot of them, but not all okay. of them. Yeah. Have you heard that uh, Ethel Allen may have been a prostitute? I've heard I've heard that was mentioned. Or yeah. that um, one place, like, I think, described her as a very free-spirited teenager. She yeah. was 19 mm -hmm. when she was murdered. Yeah. 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 Like a wild child. Yeah, yeah like a, a free-spirited wild child, which is like, I don't know, most 19-year-olds I know. Do you think BK yeah. may have been the initials of her pimp or Burger King? You know... Burger She's going to get really mad at me right now. I take it all back. I'm sorry. 
Burger Sorry, King because kidding. somebody you know, couldn't have it their one. way. <laughs> but if it was Burger King, then she would have had to have been psychic. Yeah, she may have been. Wasn't right, around right, yet. Yeah, right. Thirty-four. Wow. Right, so, what else you got? And so, um, it actually, Ashley's was originally Jack's Tavern that was opened in 1933 by Jack Allen. So, and I'm, I haven't Allen. seen anything that connects them. Mm. So it's a coincidence that it's uh, uh, Jack's, Jack Allen and Ethel Allen. Mm-hmm. A few people have said oh, they're related, but mm-hmm. um, it, nothing has been confirmed. Now, we also found out some information, too, that those initials could possibly fit uh, the person that she was last seen with. There, there is a possibility, um, but it's not, that hasn't been confirmed. Hmm. And that was a William, wasn't it? Um, it could be a Bill. William, William Bill. but they called him Billy. I yes. Think. But his last uh, name to give a W, too, and it Wilson or Wilson? Will, yeah, Wilson. Wilson yeah. Yeah. So, um, I've, I've done, I've tried to think of all the things that could yeah. be BK. And, yeah, I can't get it. Yeah. And British I don't know. tennis shoes. Yeah, it, it could be, <laughs> and, and I don't know if the, you would get tattooed, the, you know, someone's going to yeah, get gonna killed, tattooed, right? so I don't yeah. know. So it could be completely unrelated. It yeah. was just one of those, the, one of the markings. Little clinky dink. I heard, too, that women, um, because it was unusual for women to have tattoos or markings, that, that could also mean that they were part of a circus. That hmm. I've seen that theory, too. There's a, so, there are so many different possibilities. Um, if you go on and search her name, Ethel Allen, and uh, Rockledge, because there's if you just do Ethel Allen, you'll find a few others. Yeah. There's actually a politician back then too, but there's many different theories, and a lot of them that were hard to actually find factual uh, facts to, to prove the facts. Right. But they're fun stories. Yeah, not great yeah. records back in those days, especially yeah. here when Brevard there was a couple right. hundred people living. Yeah, there but right she now. had several siblings, um, so she wasn't she wasn't out. It, it, which kind of hurts the theory that she was from the circus mm-hmm. because yeah, it was, she has a family that was uh, had true. roots here. Does she have any descendants here that we're aware of at this yes. point? Steve actually told me the story about that. Yes, I actually spoke to one of her st- still surviving descendants. Wow. And everybody on Ethel Allen's side, their name first name starts with an E. Oh, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there was at the cemetery, she's buried at Crooked Mile, which is also known as Georgiana. Georgiana. Yes. And Steve pointed out that when we were at her gravesite, there was a smaller stone with the um, with the initials E A on it too. But we're not sure what that's about. Was that E A or E K? No, it was E A. E A. Interesting. So, what are some of the things that um, are said to go on at Ashley's? Just briefly, whoever wants to answer that. I just think Steve would be better at that. Okay. Well, his uh, stories are amazing. Yes. they are great. Uh, the spirit of Ethel Allen uh, makes her presence known. Um, you know, oftentimes, you know, people feel, you know, a, a tugging on the back of their shirt. Um, I've experienced smelling of perfume after everybody's been long gone. Mm. Um, the spirit of the little seven-year-old girl, uh, frequents the upstairs and I've captured phenomenal evidence of her and she's very playful, um, very shy. And then, uh, some of the uh, audio footage that I captured as well, you know, mm-hmm. just confirming, you know, uh, I'm still here, wow. or, if, if, or unfinished business, you know, it's 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 amazing. That restaurant, I have to say, because I haven't really ever been there, which is funny because I've been here for 30 years. Yeah, and it's one of the most amazing. Like the, it was just a fun place to be. Right. It's neat, right. isn't it? It was yeah. a really the cool restaurant. The and the way that the steps are really narrow and the little upstairs that overlooks the bar. It's a neat place. Well, it's a very it's cool place. several different owners. It's had several different name changes yeah. from Jack's. Um, I'm trying to think of them all, which I don't have in front of me. Do you, do you have those? Uh, not in Steve? front of me. It was, uh, let's see, Jack's Tavern, Loose Caboose. That's right. Uh, the Mad Duchess. Wow. Uh, the Sparrow Hawk, I believe. Yes. Uh, and Gentleman Jim's. Hmm. That's right. And then Ashley's in 85. Yeah. So Interesting. It's undergone. And we we have some really good footage. I mm-hmm. think some footage that's going to blow a lot of people away. Involving Elizabeth. <laughs> Involving Elizabeth and uh-huh. our cameraman. And I don't know if our cameraman is listening, and we're not going to tell him until, we, <laughs> until everything is he in that. But he might not come back and film. <laughs> So. I, I knew it was going to be crazy when before we even did it, when we just met there to, to you know, to talk about everything. And I went into the restroom and I jumped half a mile from when the, <laughs> when the dryer came on. Right, right. <laughs> yes, we had some interaction with some spirits and then we had some interaction with some jokers, some pranksters. Chuck, well, prank, pranksters, spirits. 
Okay. We'll, well go maybe, with that. Maybe it was we'll the spirits we were drinking. I don't know. Maybe you're possessed. <laughs> so, Elizabeth, Steve had his spirit box there. And Steve, tell us what a spirit box is. How does that work? Basically, what it does is a communication device that creates white noise, mm -hmm. and it scans through frequencies very, very fast, um, creating energy. Yeah. Um, so I, I liken it to, like, when you were younger, when you used to scuff your feet on a wool carpet, mm -hmm. and you build up a static charge, and then you pop your little brother in the back of the neck with that little spark. <laughs> I like that. I still do it. And, you know, you can ask questions, and anything like a CB radio or a baby monitor comes through as interference, but then you ask, you know, what is the name of the person that's sitting next to me right now? And what happened when you asked that question <laughs> oh at goodness. Ashley's the other night, Steve? Well, uh... You were sitting there at a table, right, Nate, with some of your equipment on the table. Elizabeth's sitting right next to you. And, you know, Elizabeth asks a question. Yeah. And she said, what, you know, what is my name? And, you know, it's sweeping and sweeping and sweeping. And a this woman, is freaky. And a it woman's is. voice comes through crystal clear and says, Elizabeth. <laughs> yeah, I jumped. Yeah. It's yeah. on tape. We have it verified. I witnessed it. Right. I, we all saw it. And we we're like, whoa. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's that's not a talk show or a baby monitor. No, that's, no. That's, that's, there's no way yeah. I think you could have. No. I mean, you probably could fake anything, but I doubt that seemed that's, legit. That seems. And I have to ask you, Steve, yes. um, in all of your experiences, we caught Chuck Fresh on camera at Ashley's drinking holy water. <laughs> okay? He was doing a couple shots. I was of holy a little water. nervous. He was. It right? helped. So do you think that might be what's protecting him? Um it, it can hurt. To drink holy water. Lubrication. Lubrication. There wasn't really water in there, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anejo. Holy anejo. It was holy anejo. It was holy, whatever it was. <laughs> and I was done with it. I'm like, oh God. It it can't hurt, that's for sure. But uh you know, I always bring my protection prayers yes. you know, before mm -hmm. and after each investigation. And, this is a good idea. And I'm, yeah. res I'm respectful. Yeah, I don't you provoke. Are. You know, I'm too old to fight anyway. So I... Steve yells at me whenever I, I go a say... little off. He's like, you don't want to do that. You I don't say... want to do that. And I'm like, God. Are you listening? <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. Are you listening, Chuck? And I kind of back off. I'm like, he apparently knows more than I do. Maybe I better back off here. Yeah. But I try to offer my energy, as much of my energy as they want, to try to communicate with these spirits, beings, energy, whatever it is. So I offer myself completely. We appreciate your sacrifice. Yeah. For the cause. It was a beautiful thing. It was neat. And we did that was see so it. much fun. And Elizabeth was sitting there, and she had something. She had dowsing rods. Yes. And how do they work, Steve? Well, the dowsing rods were originally used to find water underground. Mm hmm uh, construction crews to this day will still use them, you know, before they dig. Freaky. Um, but with ghost hunting, you know, spirits can use your own energy. And you ask questions like, you know, Jason, are you here right now? Take the right rod and move it all the way over. And as long as your hands are completely still, um, it, with me, my arms start to heat up when something starts to happen. Mm. And I've actually had people with a thermal camera sh shining it on my arms, and they'll start turning from yellowish to red to bright white yeah. as it's happening. Whoa! And you can't, you cannot manipulate those to move as smoothly as we saw. I with was Ms. watching, Elizabeth. and Elizabeth sat there with two. In I her was hand. perfectly still. <clears throat> she was being I'm... very still. But and you, they, they're jiggly. You and know, we were, you can't. Yeah. We were asking questions. Or Elizabeth was asking yeah. questions because she had a connection with whatever was there. It, it was a male spirit. Yeah. And um, I'm not sure if it went home with us. So I was supposed to ask that. I didn't ask that. And I didn't really quite get its age. But the questions, like, we would ask them. And I, I can't remember what question I asked. And I said something like, spread the, the dowsing rods. And it, like, went all the way. And then it touched me. And I jumped and squealed because that's what I do. It was, hug it was hugging you with the dowsing rods. But there's, there's no way humanly possible, in my opinion, if you agree, okay. Chuck, yeah, I, I, you know, to make those rods move yeah. that slowly. Yeah, there's something that going on there, and, and and there was some sort of connection yeah. there. I have to admit that. I because I would think of it like the you know I remember playing the Ouija board when I was yeah. a kid with yeah. friends, and I'm like I know <laughs> one of you. That's why they're communicating with Elizabeth. <laughs> yeah, I did too. I, did did too. I mean, like one of, I know one of my friends would be moving it, you know, because yeah. I could yeah. usually figure out which friend sure. was moving it. It's easy based the on where it goes. Sub yeah. Yeah, yeah, subconscious. But this was like I was holding it perfectly still, and I. I didn't think like I thought maybe they you were move sitting a there perfect, and you had you yeah. looked like you were building up a sweat on your because you were holding them tight. Yeah, they weren't yeah. moving. At I all. saw white knuckles. She was frozen. Well, she after was. it started like the communicating, it was freaking me out. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 
It would be freaking me out, too. And that's why we're all happy that whatever was there chose you. Well, it chose a couple other people as well. We're hey, not gonna... If I can give this away, this was really interesting. We'll just give this little tidbit away. Yes. Somehow, I don't remember how it happened, we found out it was the Spirit's birthday. Yes. yes. Do you remember how that went down? Yes. Uh, I think, Chuck, I think you were asking questions, you know, and you said... I, I am here. You know, what What do you I'm want so to say to me? I, I am here. here. <laughs> it was like that. And then it sounded like a a small child or something. It did. They came through mm-hmm. and said, happy birthday. And then we started singing happy birthday. And then the rest is a secret. And I wonder who, who, whose idea was it to sing happy birthday? It was mine. I just started doing Jack. it. Yeah, you know yeah. yeah, the rest is a secret. Yeah, there's incredible footage on that. Something yeah, happened. Yeah. We all joined in. Did you all sing too? We all I don't sang. Remember. Yeah, we all yeah. sang. And my singing some... would scare, scare most spirits away. You know, my singing would make a train take a dirt road. <laughs> yeah, I'm <mine> worse. <laughs> <laughs> and then but something happened <laughs> something on camera. Happened, right. Yes. During that birthday song. Yes, it did. So that's what's spooky. Yes. There's a lot of spooky things. And I was also in the ladies' room by myself. Yeah. Nobody else would go in there by themselves. So I went in with my video camera. I said, let me see if there's anything going on. Because people report seeing old boots underneath the stalls. Uh-huh. And I just thought it was pretty cool being in a ladies' room. <coughs> they don't usually let me in ladies' room. That's the real reason you went <laughs> in there. That's pretty good. I'm like, whoo, this is cool. There's this there's... machine on the wall. Never mind. But um, <laughs> Their stalls are really small. In they there. are. There's one that doesn't even look like it's like a hidden stall. It's got you like a crooked door. Head. Yeah, it's really like on an angle. It's really yeah. weird. So I went in. I sat in the stalls for a while. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. I had just one little light on my camera. There's and I went outside. I'm like... This is silly. Nothing's going to happen. And I walk outside. I'm staring at the door for some reason. I'm sort of ready to leave. I don't know why I was doing that. And then something appeared on my camera. It was like a flash. Something went, like, wow. wait a minute. And there's no other lights in this thing whatsoever. And this thing went, Chow. and I kind of it almost instinctually followed it. Yeah. And I went and reviewed the footage later, and it was mind blowing. Well, so it's clear as day, and it was freaking me out. It was like the la- right before I was ready to walk out of the room. Indisputable. Yeah. yeah. There, I don't think you can, even if you're a skeptic, going to Ashley's, like, you, there's, because even if I believe in stuff like that, I still have the other part of my brain that's, like, skeptical. Right. But you can't, you, you can't be right. skeptical there. It's, yeah. it's you'd see too much it's, stuff. There's just right. way. It's too real. <laughs> and for us, that was, that, for, for what we're doing, that was baby steps. That was baby steps. We haven't even it. got started yet. And, you know, let's just, let's see if somebody special out there is listening by the initials of T. G. Hmm. Yes. Knows. Yes. Um. She was not aware that while she was there, Steve captured something uh, in response to her. As her well. sneeze. Her yes. Sneeze. Yes. yes. Mm. So, very interesting. Anyway, we captured probably more in two hours than a lot of ghost hunters have captured in their entire careers. Well, we had some people here that were. Uh, very helpful. Pointing at me. Influential. We have the team. This is the dream team. Just right place it at the is. right time. Everything was right for that moment. Karen put that together. So well, it was kind of it was all of us. It's a group effort. You. you did it. You put this thing. This is all you. It was an idea, and everybody has contributed. Elizabeth is phenomenal with she the research phenomenal. that she does and the energy and the spirit that she brings to this. Steve, your knowledge. And your enthusiasm, your passion. Yeah. It was awesome. It's amazing. And your bravery. And your bravery. <laughs> Kahunas. Yeah. <laughs> serious. Steel. Steel. Yeah, right? So Unbelievable. Your new name is Steve I can't Steel. can't see where we go next. Yeah. Well, actually, we need some help. Actually, now that we're on the air, we need somebody, if they know anyone who is involved with the Coco Village Playhouse. I understand there's yes. a few spirits there. Also, the Henniger Center in Melbourne. Mm-hmm. So we need, if you know anybody that works there or has anything to do with the management of it, we'd like to come in there and do an investigation. We're very respectful. We're very professional, obviously. True. And also, as we mentioned earlier, we're going to be doing folklore and fact. So if you have some areas, um, interesting facts about the area that you would like us to show, because basically what we're doing is we're just, we're showing and sharing our experiences with others. So in case you're tired of going to Disneyland or someplace else and you want to take the road Less traveled. Can we use that today? Road less traveled. The road yeah, less traveled, yeah. and and learn some other uh, unique tidbits. Yes, yes right. Nice. Um, that's what this is all about. Steve, is there any paranormal activity going on right here in the studio? You have a, a little device here. What's this thing called? It's an EMF meter. It's uh-huh. called a mill meter. Um, it basically tells the temperature and the EMF uh, signals, and it also has a proximity sensor which creates its own EMF field around the sensor. 
and mm -hmm. it basically. Mm -hmm. Is there anything with us uh, now? Is anything in the studio, Steve? No. It basically Nothing creates here. its own. Its own. Oh, field. wait a minute! What was that? So. Did you bring your holy water, sir? <laughs> no. Mine's almost gone, so you're in trouble. <laughs> All right. Anyway, we'll talk more about that on our show. we got to wrap up here. Thank you, Steve yes. Kurtzke. Thank you for having for me. For all your work and all your knowledge and your bravery. Elizabeth Rockhill, for your research. You. Can't wait to read your book. Thank you. And do some further investigations. Karen yes. Wooden, for putting this whole thank thing together. You're yes. a genius yourself. Well thank done. Thank you, everybody. And thank you for listening. Holler at us, radiotakeover.rocks, and check us out on Facebook. We'll see you all next Wednesday at 1. Nice job, guys. Well, yeah, that is you guys are great. smooth. You guys are good. Cool. This, is, this is it. And Steve's got this down pat because the first time you came this on, you were is... a little nervous. Oh, yeah. Man, you're passionate this is today. It. It's beautiful. We were all nervous that day. This well, it's is not like group, you can look, watch the audience and picture them in their underwear because yeah. you know, <laughs> what else can you do? So yeah, you just right? jump right